Hi everybody, welcome to Photoshop Lab 1. Today you are going to need four different images. You're going to need the bowl of water and goldfishes 1, 2, and 3. We are going to start by opening Photoshop for the first time, kind of talk about the software and how it's laid out. Um, we'll talk about things like your canvas setting, navigation and workspace, transforming images, layers and groups, adjustments, some retouching tools, and a couple of filters. All right, so you should already have Photoshop downloaded before starting this video. First thing we're gonna do is gonna open up some files in here. So you can do that here through the open button and it will launch you into your files on your computer. You can open it from your downloads or from your desktop, etc. You can also always come up here to file and open and you'll get the same thing. All right. Instead of clicking on one of these images at a time and opening them separately, we can open all four of them by clicking on the top one, holding down shift, and then clicking on the bottom most file that we want to open, and then selecting the open button. All right. So you might notice that my screen will look a little bit different than your screen right now. That will depend on if you've ever used Photoshop before, if this is the first time you're opening it, what tools show up um, here in your workspace or on your screen. I'm going to collapse both of these, or excuse me, exit both of these, just in case this is where you're starting from as well, if you have nothing to work with. Um, so this is how to get your toolbar. You're going to click on Window up here and then scroll down to Tools. Your tools may be stacked two in a row or they can be just in one vertical slice and you can decide which one you like better depending on the kind of space that you have on your screen. All right. The next thing we want is a window for layers. So again, we're going to go to Window, and then from the drop-down menu, we're going to select Layers. If more than layers comes up for you, like it has paths and properties or color, etc., that's fine, so long as you do have a Layers window as well. All right. Between those, we should get a lot done today. Um, let's start with the bowl of water, JPEG. This is where we're going to actually be doing most of our work. We're going to bring our other images into here. Um, one of the first thing I want you to notice is that in layers we have a small version of this image that shows up here in our layers. That's because this image is in fact a layer. There's a lock icon and an eyeball icon next to it. The lock is a way that Photoshop prevents you from making changes. If we select that you'll notice that we have a bunch of things that weren't highlighted before become available to us. If you ever need to lock a layer you're just going to go ahead and click on this little lock icon and then you won't be able to make some of these changes. All right, so let's unlock it first, and then let's see what happens when we select the eyeball for layer visibility. If you click on it once, you'll notice that your image disappears, and instead we have a small checkerboard grid behind it that is white and gray. All right, white and gray checkerboard is Photoshop's way of telling us that there is no pixel information. This is transparent. It's invisible. All right, so there's nothing behind our fish bowl of water that has any pixel information. All right. Great. Next, let's talk about what we know about this file, what we can figure out about it from within here. Um, a lot of people's first question is, how big is my file? All right. We can come up here to image and down to image size. Image size is going to tell us our width and height in whatever we decide. So if you'd like to know what your width and height is in pixels, or millimeters, or points, etc., you can select those from that drop-down menu. I'm going to keep mine in inches. It's also going to tell us our resolution. All right, right now mine says that it's 72 pixels per inch. If you've not done a lot of work um, digitally before, uh, pixels per inch is PPI, or it's also called dots per inch, DPI, and that is how many, exactly what it sounds like, pixels there are per inch. Now that's in one direction, that is either a height or a width. Um, 72 pixels per inch, or DPI, um, will display on a screen, so a phone, a tablet, a laptop, a television, at full resolution. It won't look blurry. Um, however, if you try to print an image that was 72 
PPI or DPI, it will be blurry. That's because printers require up to 300 DPI. Now me typing that in here does not change the actual resolution of this photograph. Um, unfortunately, I wish the world was magical like that. If we did want to change, we wanted to see how big we could print this image, we can deselect this resample box, type in 300 for pixels per inch, and then we find out that if we needed to print this, it would have to reduce in size to be about three and a half by three inches. It would be a very small print, whereas just displaying it on a screen, it could display 14 and a quarter inches and 12 and some change as well. So it can display bigger than it can print. Um, you don't need to apply any of those changes that I just did, but I just want you to be aware of that in the future if you plan on doing any printed uh, work. All right, so you can hit OK if you kept it at 72, or you can hit Cancel if you put in uh, 300. We'll just exit that. Um, next, we can also look at our canvas size. Now, canvas is the amount of space your workable space in the program. All right, so this is telling me that I am at 1024 pixels by 923 pixels. If I change this to inches, we would see some very familiar numbers from that last window. Um, from in here, if we would like to, we could type in a larger quantity of inches. And then hit OK. And then you'll notice that we have a bunch of extra space outside of our image. Now it's those white and gray checkerboards, which means that there's no pixels out there, all right? There's no image information. But that's okay, because we'll give it some. All right, so now that you've enlarged that canvas to be 30 by 30 inches, let's bring some more layers into this by collecting our goldfish. All right, so if we go to Goldfish 1, PNG, um, the very first thing we're going to do is collect our Move tool. It is this very topmost tool on your toolbar. It's also hotkey V. Um, once you're in this tool, you can click on an image, on a layer within an image, and then we're actually going to drag our click all the way up into Bowl of Water, that tab at the top, and then down into our canvas and then we're going to release our click. And that has brought all of that pixel information of that goldfish into a new layer in our bowl of water file. All right, let's do it again with goldfish number two. All right, we're going to click with our move tool. Remember hotkey V. With our move tool, we're going to click and drag up into bowl of water. And then drag our cursor down into our canvas and then release it. Perfect. And I've got two goldfish. Now you notice that this goldfish showed up in a, its own brand new layer. And if we click on our first goldfish and our second goldfish, we can move them independently. We can also click on our bowl of water and move that independently. All right, we have one more to get. Let's go get goldfish number three. So again, we're going to click with the move tool. Now if your layer is locked for any reason, you can unlock it before you move it. You know, just to demo, I'll just lock it really quick. Let's say you try to move it with that move tool. This is what would happen. You'd get this little marquee showing up. All right, unlock it, then move it. Click drag all the way up in the bowl of water tab, down into the canvas, and release. Great. All right, now, depending on your familiarity with other programs, you might have a pretty good zoom on your computer already. You might have a scroll wheel, etc. cetera. Um, for, in Photoshop, you can hold down Command and Space and to zoom in, Command, Space, and Option to zoom out. Um, you can also hold down Command and tap your minus key to zoom out or your plus key to zoom in. Um, if ever you are zoomed so far in or so far off of your canvas and you just want to recenter your screen, you can hit Command and Zero and it will center your canvas back onto your software, all right, right in the middle. All right, so what you should have right now is a goldfish bowl, all right, a bowl of water and then three separate goldfish. Now, there's no way to enlarge an image without stretching the pixels and for it to get blurry or pixelated. So instead of making this bowl bigger, 
to fit the fish inside of it, we're going to make the fish smaller. We can compress them um, instead of enlarging the bowl. Um, we're going to do what's called a transform. If you click on a layer, click on one of your fish, and you hit Command and T, that's if you're on an apple. If you're on a PC, you can hit Control and T. You'll get a bounding box around the layer. All the pixels in the layer will have a bounding box around it. Now this bounding box is how you can resize, rotate, or if we right click inside it, we can flip the image within the bounding box. All right. We're going to drag it up here. We're going to make sure that several goldfish will fit in this bowl, so we're going to make it kind of small. And then once we're done flipping, rotating, and resizing, you're going to apply all those transformations by hitting the Enter or Return key. All right. Next, let's do, the, let's do goldfish the first. All right, so we get into the Transform tool by hitting Command T, that's if you're on a Mac, Control T if you're on a PC. And we will resize by dragging, clicking and dragging on the corner of that bounding box. You can click and drag from any of the little notifying squares there around the bounding box, any of the midpoints or the corners. Um, if you hold down Shift while resizing, you will con you will excuse me you will break the constraint on the proportion so you can squash and stretch that pixel information. I wouldn't recommend it right now. So go ahead if you have tried that with me, just go ahead and hit Command Z or Control Z to undo that work. And when you're finished with the transformations, go ahead and hit Enter or Return. All right, last one. Let's try again. Command T. fit this goldfish in here, and then hit return. Now I'm going to zoom into here. If you ever need to drag yourself around your screen, around your canvas, you can hold down your space bar and then click and kind of pull yourself as if you're pulling on little monkey bars. Um, now I'm going to want five fish in this bowl because there's a lot of things that I want to change about these fish. Um, also, I don't want to see this white edge around my fish. There's a cheater, I guess it's a, it's a trick um, within Photoshop that lots of people know, and it's that if you use the blending mode multiply, white pixels become invisible. Instead of changing the blending mode on three goldfish to be this way, I think I would rather change the blending mode of my fish bowl and then place it above all three fish. All right. So this is where we're going to get into kind of manipulating your layers. So first we're transforming the pixels on each layer. Let's reorder our layers. Let's go ahead and click and drag that bowl layer all the way to the top. Now you notice now it's covering all the information below it. That's why we're going to use a blending mode. And actually, before we do that, let's name it so that we don't lose track of it. Fishbowl. And we'll call each one one, two, and three. All right, so now we've named a couple of layers and we won't lose track of them too much. Um, on Fishbowl, once you have that layer selected, there's a drop down menu for the blending mode of the layer. And we're going to go from normal to multiply. All right, so all of the white pixel information of our fishbowl layer is now clear or invisible. It's multiplying onto the goldfish. If I tried to click and drag my goldfish right now, however, I'm going to move my fishbowl layer. That's because it's on top. This is not what we want. So next, I'm going to lock my fishbowl layer. Now when I click and drag it, I get that funny little marquee error like I can't. Now if I click and drag my fish, I can click and drag my fish below it. So make sure your fishbowl layer is locked. We're going to now duplicate two of these fish, so we have five fish in total. Um, 
let's duplicate this fish right here. This one that's just uh, pretty ordinary. Now there's, we can do this a couple ways. We'll do it both ways that I know of. The first is to hold down, while you're in your move tool, remember hotkey V, is to hold down your option key or alt key and then click and drag. Oops, and of course I got my fishbowl. Let's turn off the fishbowl for a second. Hold down my option key and then click and drag that layer. You notice it gave me a copy. I'm gonna rename that layer four. All right, now with my move tool again, I'm gonna um, do it this another way, another way to duplicate. I'm going to select my layer three, which is where this goldfish is. I'm gonna click that down into this very small icon that is a little plus sign in a box, and that will copy my layer. Now the copy will show up exactly on the original, so we'd have to move the copy off of the original to be able to see it. All right. We'll name that one five, fish five. All right, we'll turn fishbowl back on so we can move these fish around in here. Um, let's change our two duplicates so that they don't look quite so the same as their originals. Um, we can do that with our transform tool. Let's go ahead and hit command T. And let's flip this fish horizontally by right clicking and flipping. And I think I might add just a little bit of a rotation as well. Once you're done, you remember you hit enter to apply your changes. Okay, now with the duplicate, excuse me, of our first fish, let's do the same thing. Let's hit command T. Remember a PC, it is control T. And then flip it and rotate that one too. Maybe down this time. You might even resize this one so it looks like it's a smaller fish. All right, hit enter once you're done. I want you to just for the next couple seconds, go ahead and arrange these goldfish in your bowl tastefully. Don't let them uh, run into each other. You'll notice then you get that little white outline that they came with in their file. We don't want that right now. And then once you have them filling up the space of that bowl, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so that was how to reorder your layers. Remember we clicked and dragged one over the top. That's how to use a layer blending mode or when we chose multiply, and that was how to create new layers or duplicates of layers. All right. Um, along with that, if you ever need to throw a layer away, you can always click and drag it into the trash can. I'm not going to let go of my click because I actually do want my layer, but you can click and drag it to the excuse me, drag it to the trash can in the same way that you dragged it into the duplicate icon. Okay. So this first set of goldfish. We are going to group. So we did all this work right here, and we're going to put these all into a little folder in our file by first selecting our bottom most layer, holding down shift, selecting our top most layer. This is a little bit like how when we opened the file we had to select multiple images. And then we're going to hit the folder. You can also hit command G or control G to create a group. And we'll call this fishbowl one. So you did that by double clicking on the text and typing it. All right. I would like a duplicate of my entire group. So we're going to do some changing. And I want to save a copy of everything that I've done previously in case I need to go back a few steps. So there I am zooming out. We are going to duplicate this group by clicking it on our layer palette, dragging it down. And you'll notice we get, excuse me, our copy. So in fishbowl copy, we have all the same layers with all the same settings as the first one. All right, we'll collapse fishbowl one. Let's name this fishbowl two. And then we will transform it, Command T. Oops, I have to have it selected. Command T. Pardon me. I have to have our all of our layers unlocked and then have our group selected before we can transform it and bring it to the side. Perfect. 
All right, when you don't do the transformation, hit the Enter key. All right, so we should have two identical copies here. Now we're gonna go back to Fishbowl 1. We're gonna make some changes to the fish layers within here. So we can leave Fishbowl 2 alone for now. If you would like to, it's even fine to just hide it with that little eyeball icon so it doesn't even distract you. In Fishbowl 1, let me zoom back in here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick one of my fish and we're going to make an adjustment. All right. Adjustments are ways to change the pixel information of an entire layer or an entire selection. This is my layer that's selected. We're going to come up here to Image and Adjustments. And the very first thing we're going to do is let's explore Hue and Saturation. It's everybody's favorite. All right. In Hue and Saturation, you're going to get this little pop-up window. and Every time you change the position of these sliders, it is going to change either the hue, which is the color, the saturation, which is the strength, or the lightness, which is how much white is added in, of your layer. I'm gonna make this, let's, let's make sure we get kind of a rainbow of colors here. We're gonna go, let's start with the, oh yeah, start with the bluefish. All right, go ahead and change that hue to be a bluefish. Now, if you ever want to know how much change you've made to a layer, maybe you're not doing something as dramatic as changing its entire color, but you'd like to check it against its original without applying your change by hitting OK, you can deselect and reselect this preview box, and it will show you what has been and what will be. You hit OK. All right. Fish 4, let's do that again. Let's go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and let's change this one to be a totally different color. Yours do not have to match mine. It is okay if they are slightly different. The goal is that we're going to make rainbow fish. So that's magenta. And we'll leave one of them intact, one of them the same. Go back to adjustments. So remember image adjustments and then hue saturation. And we'll make this one. Maybe we have to go a little bit more light yellow. We can adjust the saturation if we want it to be just a little bit more brighter, more brighter. Ooh. I'm not an English major. And hit OK. So the next few seconds, you should have five fish that are all different colors because we changed their hue and maybe a little bit of their saturation. All right, next, let's try to change something else. Let's go back to our bluest fish, our first fish that we changed. And let's try another adjustment. Let's put a little brightness and contrast. So we're going to go image, adjustment, brightness, and contrast. And here we can add brightness or light to our image or take brightness away from our image. All right, now if you go too far in either direction, we start to get some very strange pixelated fragmentation on the side. Um, most adjustment tools are only meant to be used um, in very small increments, probably less than 20%. If you use them a little bit too strongly, then they start to give themselves away. So contrast is the difference between the lights and the darks. We can increase the contrast, or we can decrease the contrast and bring everything a little bit closer to the middle. All right, when you're done, remember you can always hit preview to see what the changes you've made look like before applying it or canceling out, but we'll go ahead and hit OK. So brightness and contrast adds, subtracts brightness to your photo. Contrast either increases the distance between your lightest light and your darkest dark or brings them closer to the middle. All right, we can also do color balance. Let's do that on our pinkest fish if you have one that's rather pink or red. We can come up here too, 
image adjustments, and then color balance. All right, now within color balance, instead of changing our hue at the same time, which is what we did with hue and saturation, we can target very specific colorways. All right, so in the computer, they know these as RGB, red, green, and blue. So we can either add blue or subtract blue, add green or subtract green, add red or subtract red, and we can actually target the value inside of our fish. So the midtones are the middle values, the shadows are the darkest part of the image, and the highlights are the lightest part of the image. So in our midtones, let's see what happens when we add green. Now it's not going to turn our image green, we're just adding green information into the middle tones. What happens if we subtract red? See, it's starting to cool off. That purple starts to get less red and more blue, more cyan, because we're dragging it towards cyan, which is subtracting red. We could subtract blue by adding yellow. All right, so these are much more subtle changes in color in warmth, in temperature, that you can make um, much more slowly than changing the whole hue or saturation. All right. So I'm going to warm this up a whole lot. I want this to be a really warm pink fish. If I change this to shadows, I might get a slightly different set of controls. So now I'm hitting those areas that have the dark scales on it. I can maybe add some bluer into the darker scales. And if I go to my highlights, it's going to target the very lightest pixels on that layer and change the nature of those. We can deselect and reselect preserve luminosity if that's important. All right, go ahead and hit OK. So that is hue saturation, brightness and contrast, and color balance. All right, let's leave fishbowl one alone now. And let's go to fishbowl number two. We'll turn that group back on. And let's try some new things. So those were kind of some three very basic adjustments. Um, let's try some different adjustments this time. In this fishbowl, let's select our very first fish. And instead of using those previous kind of color changing, let's change this to black and white. All right, so we're going to adjustments and black and white. Now this is going to give us options. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. I was on fishbowl layer. I need to lock that layer. Sorry, everybody, that was my fault. There we go, now I'm on the fish layer. Image adjustments, black and white. And in here we can decide how dark our black is or how light our white is depending on what the color was of the original photograph. So there's a lot of red, a lot of red and yellow in these goldfish and so we want to make sure that they don't get too dark when we turn them black and white. There's not a lot of blues so if you notice when you adjust the blues almost nothing happens to your goldfish. That's because there really wasn't any blue information inside those pixels to change. Let's go ahead and change that to a nice middle gray before hitting OK. Remember if you're unsure of your changes you can always deselect and reselect the preview button. Just give it a little look-see and then hit OK. Alright so that's how to turn an object black and white and have control over how dark those blacks are um, based on the colors of the original image. Um, next let's change the opacity of one of these fish. We're going to make one of these fish kind of see-through. So earlier we made our fishbowl see-through by changing its blending mode. You don't have to do that. We can actually just go right next door to that blending mode to the opacity and reduce how opaque the fish is. So we're making it more transparent which is less opaque. Awesome. All right, next adjustment. Let's learn some more stuff. Go ahead and select a new fish. 
we're going to go to something called replace color. If we go up here to image and then adjustments, it's down here near the bottom. Replace color. Now this allows you to, you notice that as soon as you use this tool, your cursor turns into an eyedropper, to select a range of color on a layer and then to change that color and the colors that are adjacent to it, that are close to it. I think I've clicked something a little bit too, let's see. Let's not use too much fuzziness there. So what it should do is leave colors that are not like it alone and change mostly just the color that you eye dropped. Oh, let's go for that nice blue. We'll use a little more fuzziness to kind of help it blend in a little bit. So this is a really fast way to like change the color of shirts or a strap um, or a button in an image. You can just replace that color. All right, go and hit OK when you're finished, kind of turning the top of that fish blue. Bluish purplish, I suppose. Um, next, let's use um, one of Photoshop's filters. Um, we're going to use one of its photo filters first. There's a lot of different filters to use. Um, let's come up here to image adjustments and then we'll go to photo filter. That should bring us to a drop down menu of some preset filters. Now these warming ones aren't going to do much because our goldfish is already very brightly colored and very warm. Um, we could try to give it a cyan it's doing very little. Let's try a sepia tone. And we'll change how quickly, how dense that filter affects the goldfish. Now this is affecting it very little. So this is the filter, we're grabbing sepia. This is the color that it automatically comes with. If you want to change the color of one of the photo filters, you can select a new color from the color picking menu just by clicking inside that colored square. And again, you can always deselect and reselect preview just to double check the changes that you're making. If we hit OK. No, I don't ever particularly use those. Um, a lot of people love to save presets into filters and then apply them to all of their photos. It's um, how they establish an artistic voice or a style or a brand. Um, the next thing that we're going to try is a colorize. So go ahead and select the very last fish that we haven't changed yet. And we're actually going to go back into our hue and saturation adjustment. And let's pick a new hue, so like you've done before. But this time, we're going to select this little box that says colorize. And now instead of having lots of different colors that are being affected from your original, it's going to make sure that every pixel is a certain color plus shades or tints of that color. I'm going to change the saturation, how, how powerful that color is, how much pigment is in it. Go ahead and choose something that feels good to you. I like this kind of raspberry red. I might even dull it out a little bit. And then when you're done, go ahead and hit OK. All right, let's get a second, or excuse me, a third set of fish in a fishbowl. I'm going to zoom out for a second. And fishbowl one, I'm going to duplicate. And remember, I have to unlock this layer before transforming, Command T, that duplicate. Hitting Enter. All right, now in this set, I'm going to do fishbowl three. This set, we're going to move into some of 
the other preset filters within Photoshop, they're a little bit more um, versatile than the adjustment filters. All right. Go ahead and select your first fish inside this layer. If you haven't yet, go ahead and relock the fish bowl so you can select your fish. All right, now this one, we are going to use a filter that is called Blur. And inside this drop-down menu next to Blur, you see we have a lot of choices. Now, absolutely, you should be exploring these on your own. You should be trying all sorts of things so you learn about the program. The one that I want to show you right now, let's do this motion blur. We're going to get a little toolbox here so we can adjust it before applying the change. This is asking us how many pixels is our fish traveling with this motion blur. So you can increase that distance or decrease that distance on that layer. You can change the angle that the blur is occurring at. For the fish, it does make most sense to be doing so horizontally. That is the direction of its travel. And then go ahead and hit OK. You can also, again, double check your work. All right, so there's a blur. That is a type of blur. There's many types of blur that you can use. Um, next, let's go to liquify, which is funny because it's a goldfish. Um, go ahead and choose your next fish. We're going to go into the liquify filter from the drop down menu. All right, now this is going to bring an entirely new toolbar up, excuse me, toolbox up. Let's zoom into our pixel information. There are a couple things you can do within liquify. This tool is famous for um, changing the shape things in photographs, so this is um, where a lot of touch-up for models happens, um, enlarging or reducing parts of bodies, um, features of faces, etc. So these are the three tools, excuse me, not more than three, these are the couple tools that we're going to talk about for just a second with this fish. Now you notice when I'm hovering my cursor over this fish, I have this very large circle. This is the size of my tool. This is a really large tool. My tool is bigger than my fish. So in order to reduce the size of my tool, I can come up here to where the brush tool options shows me my size, and I can go ahead and drag my cursor side to side or click on that slider, bring it back. I can also use a hotkey, which is my left bracket tool, and every time I tap it, it's going to get smaller. All right, once I have a tool that is smaller than my fish, or at least uh, comparable to the size of my fish, I can start using it by clicking and dragging. This is a very dramatic example. I am liquefying. I've turned my pixel information into liquid that can be stirred so I can be I can push it around. That's what this little icon is a finger pushing. Um, I can pucker so I can use my tool. Oh look how my tool must be very large. I can't even see it. There it is. I can pucker which squeezes those pixels closer together, or I can bloat. Let's see, we'll do this to the to the tail again. My tool must be huge because I can't even see the edge of it. So, gotta hit that bracket tool so I can see it. I can make that tail fin bigger or the nose bigger, etc. So that is those are the three that we'll kind of play with. Probably the most is the pucker bloat and the forward warp. You can imagine all the fun things you could do to images with this tool. When you're done, go and hit OK, and then it will apply the changes to that layer. So that was Liquify. It was a Liquify filter. So we've used Motion Blur and Liquify. Um, let's go to a couple others. This one, this yellow fish. I don't know what color yours is, but mine's yellow. Let's go from filter, um, let's go to pixelate, and we'll change it to color halftone. Right. See what happens there. Now this one doesn't allow me to preview it, it's just asking me 
about which color channels and the max radius of pixels. I don't know what those are going to look like, so I'm going to have to hit OK, and if I don't like it, I'll use Control Z to get back. Oh, I love it. Doesn't look like a fish at all anymore, but it looks like color halftone. All right, so if I did need to go back, I could always hit Command Z, or if you're on a PC, Control Z. Now, if I want to go back forward, I can hold Command Option and Z, and it will go forward. All right, so that's undo and then redo. All right, let's do another one. This is super fun. All right, select the next fish, and let's go into our filter gallery. So you're clicking on filter and going into filter gallery. Now this filter gallery is full of the wackiest things that you can do to pixels. All right, there are all these drop down menus of all these ways to treat pixels. Now some of them are kind of gimmicky, pretending to turn your pixels into paint or into apparently poster edges. Um, not all filters work well on all images. So just be careful with this much power. Know that you can make some kind of bad decisions. Brush strokes. Ink at line. See that looks terrible. Um, let's go down here into texture. And we're going to change this one into stained glass. Now, depending on some of your tool settings, your little dividing between the glass might not be purpley blue. That's OK. That just depends on everybody's computer. Um, I'm going to change the cell size in here, how big each of those stained glass pieces is. I can change my border thickness. Now, it should be noted that each one of these can be changed. It'll have lots of settings. Light intensity. Oh, how much is the light coming through that stained glass? When you're done, go ahead and hit OK. All right, let's hit another filter before we move on. Go and select your last fish. And instead of going into that filter gallery again, uh, let's see what they have here under stylize down at the bottom. Um, I like the idea of seeing what it looks like as an oil painting. So we're going to go ahead and click on oil paint from there. And we'll want to make sure that preview is selected so we can see it happening. Okay, so this is just converting all of our pixel information into what look like brush strokes, even the white outside of the fish, which at this point is kind of unavoidable, but that's okay. Looks like we can stylize it. So how much is the brush stroke long versus a little more stabby? How clean is the brush stroke? Oh, I don't want to mess with that. That feels wrong. Or it should feel real messy. And then the scale, I think, of our brush So we also have bristle detail. And then how is this paint lit? Do we have lighting at all? Oh, it would definitely look better with the lighting. At what angle are those brush strokes lit? How shiny are they? How wet is that paint? Oh, yikes, don't do that. And when you're done with all these options, you can hit OK. So those are some more filters. So first we played with adjustments. That's what these top two are. Mostly hue and saturation, some color, balance, brightness, opacity, replace color, colorize, etc. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use some of those uh, retouch tools on another copy of our first fishbowl. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that first fishbowl. We can collapse fishbowl 3. It doesn't take up all that space on our layer palette. And then we'll rename this one fishbowl 4. And I've learned my lesson. I've got to come in here and 
unlock that before I use my transform command T on that group. And when I'm done placing it, go ahead and hit enter. I'm going to relock the fishbowl and zoom in. Now you notice these space bars showing up at the bottom of my screen. That's because I'm holding my space bar down while I'm zooming. Okay, so a retouch tool. So most of the stuff we've been doing to these fish so far has been out of these kind of drop down menus, um, either our filter menu or image and adjustment menu. Um, the retouch tools are actually loaded here into your toolbar here in Photoshop. Um, let's see, which one is fish one? Fish one is blue. Okay, so go ahead and figure out which fish you would like to work on first. Um, the retouch tools are something that are going to be a little more familiar if you've used another painting program. So we do have things like a brush, which is a paint brush. And within a layer we can paint in color. Right, I'm going to hit Control Z again. Um, the size of my tool came in really large, so I'm going to reduce it before using it. Now why did my paint come in purple, kind of a purpley indigo blue? That is because that is a color loaded right here in my toolbar, this foreground color. So there's a foreground color and a background color. If I double click on that, I can get any color from this color picking menu. All right. Now my brush has automatically come in as a very soft, round airbrush. There are so many brushes in Illustrator that you will use in the future. We won't really use that many in this class, um, but I want to show you how to find them and how to change them. Come up here to Window, kind of how like we got layers, and then we'll go down to Brushes. All right, you can see there are many, many, many kinds of brushes in here. We could do a hard brush, we have dry media brushes, and yours are going to be different than mine because I've downloaded some. Um, you'll have preset ones. And remember to change the size of your tool, you can use that bracket key, left bracket to make it smaller, right bracket to make it bigger. If you ever need to select a color to change your brush tool to, to a color that is already in the image, you can hit I and then click on a color elsewhere in your image and you'll see that it loads that into your foreground. And then you'll go back into your brush tool with hotkey B. If you're in the brush tool and you'd like to access your eyedropper without leaving the brush tool, if you hold down your option key, you'll enter that tool. And then when you let go of your option key, you'll be back in the brush. So that's kind of fun. All right. The brush tool is incredibly important for digital painting. It's very versatile. You can change so many things about every brush, all the settings, its size, hardness, spacing, if it's tilted, um, if it is pressure sensitive, if you were using it on a tablet, etc. Um, there are classes um, specifically for brushes and digital painting, um, and I really hope you get a chance to take them someday. All right, so that was layer number the first, use the brush tool. All right, opposite of the brush tool, let's go ahead and hit V so I can reselect a different layer, this yellow fish. Um, Opposite of the brush tool is an erase tool. All right, that's right here. This is the eraser tool. You can click it on your toolbar or you can hit E for eraser. All right, the size of my tool is a little bit small so I can make it larger or I can make it smaller with that left bracket. Now, erasers use brushes just like the paintbrush does. So my brush can be very hard. My brush can be soft. My brush can be big, small, textured, all that jazz. And we have erased the pixels off of that layer. All right, so that's what your eraser tool does, is it erases pixel information. All right, next, let's talk about these other couple tools down here. We have, in this tool, plus its little drop-down buddies, just click and hold on a tool you can get if it has any uh, family members. We have Blur, Sharpen, and Smudge. All right. 
I'm going to hit hockey V really quick to get down here and click on my green fish so I know that's the layer I'm affecting. So with blur, sharpen, and smudge, they're going to do exactly what we think they're going to do. Now sharpen, I don't want you to be excited like you can add resolution into a photograph. Um, we think that maybe this fin feels a little bit blurry and we brush the sharpen tool over the top of it. You see it takes away some of the fuzziness between it, but what happens is we end up getting all this weird kind of pink and fragmentation. If we use it on maybe the top, if I click and drag this over the top of the fish, it's going to try to divide the dark from the light and eventually it will start to make up information that we're getting that pink again if you can see that happening on my screen. Your fish might not be green so it might be uh, a slightly different color. Um, so sharpen is a way that the tool gathers information on inside that circle and tries to divide the darks from the lights more strongly and if you keep using it, keep using it, keep asking it to do more, it's going to start to make things up. So this doesn't add resolution into a photo. Um, it just increases the contrast briefly. Um, the blur tool does the opposite. The blur tool blurs information. So this is different than the motion blur because the motion blur applied to all of the fish at once. This tool is applying to where we're brushing it using a click and drag. All right, so we're basically unfocusing a bunch of that area. If we were to come back here and try to refocus it with a sharpen tool, you're going to see how um, very hard it is for the tool to accomplish this. It's starting to make stuff up now. It doesn't know what we want. It can't fix a blurry photo. Oh no. All right, I'm done being dramatic. Okay, smudge tool. Smudge tool is the third one in this family. All right, smudge tool is a little bit like the liquid liquify tool. Um, it doesn't have pucker and bloat. All it has is the ability to drag pixel information around briefly depending on the size and strength of your tool. All right, so if we look at the strength of the tool up here, we can change that using the drop down menu and moving that. So if we, if we change that strength up to 100, we can drag wet paint around a really long time. So this smudge tool. I use it personally when I need to add a little bit of um, maybe single tufts of hair or fur on the edge. If I go ahead and reduce this, this doesn't even look like a fish anymore, um, but if I reduce the size of this tool and pull out some very individual quote unquote hairs, then I can kind of break up a really harsh outline. All right. So that's blur, sharpen, and smudge. Let's leave this atrocity alone for a minute. <laughs> Let's go to another fish. I'm going to hotkey V so that I can click on a new fish and change something about this new fish. Um, we can talk about the sponge tool, which was just below that family. The sponge tool, it comes in another family, sponge, dodge, and burn. Um, Sponge tool is kind of an outlier. It actually doesn't really belong with dodge and burn, but that's okay. Um, we'll start with the sponge. And right now it is in the desaturate mode. Now I know that because if I look way up here on my toolbar, it tells me that it's in the desaturate mode. This one has two, desaturate and saturate. So in the desaturate mode, if I click with my tool over an area, it's going to remove color information. It's going to turn it closer to like a black and white photo. Now the more saturated the color is, the longer it's going to take for that color to affect it. So that red in the face was really strong and it's taking it a, quite a few brush strokes to finally turn it black and white. All right, now if I change this instead to the saturate mode, um, the unfortunate thing is saturate mode cannot turn a black and white photo into a color photo because it doesn't know what the colors were originally. Um, so you'll notice if I try really hard to bring color back into this fish, it can only bring it back in areas that hadn't gone too far yet. Um, I can saturate the other areas that still have color information. I can make them even brighter colors. Um, but you can't bring color into an area that 
has none. It'll try, but it will ultimately fail. You get something that looks like that. It's kind of a fun effect. It feels very uh, decayed visually, but it certainly doesn't look like a photograph anymore. Um, next, we will do the very last couple of tools here for today. We're going to look at the dodge and the burn tool. All right. So the dodge and burn tool come from um, a history of uh, photography and developing photographs in a dark room. And there were tools that looked either like a stick with um, a paddle or a hole that allowed you to prevent light from reaching a developing photo um, in certain areas. So our dodge tool. Um, let's go ahead and say up here in our options, it's targeting our shadows. Let's go ahead and target the midtones. It's going to keep, oh, I might have chosen the wrong color fish for this, or I might not have my fish selected like I thought I did. I don't have my fish selected like I thought I did. Okay. So hockey V, go ahead and reselect that fish that we want to work on. And then go back to our dodge tool. Always check what layer you're trying to affect because you'll probably do something like I just did a lot for the first little while that you're learning. If nothing's happening or something unexpected happens, check your layers. All right, now that I'm in the dodge tool, I'm going to go ahead and I'm adding lightness into areas and I'm targeting my midtones. If I target my highlights, I might get something a little bit, oh, there's a lot more highlights in there. And my burn tool is the opposite. Burn tool burns areas down, makes them darker. All right, so this is how you are targeting your values. This is how strong your tool is, how much exposure you're allowing your tool to have. And then remember your bracket tool is the left bracket. In the right bracket, change the size of the tools. All right, now today was all about making a mess. This is not supposed to end up a very pretty image. Um, remember to return to just your full canvas on screen. You can hit Command and Zero, and then you get everything all at once. Um, let's neaten up this file just a little bit before we save it. Um, First thing we'll do, I'm going to unlock all of my fish bolts so that I can transform each group without any struggle. All right. Once you've opened, unlocked, and then collapsed each of these again, um, fish bowl one, let's go ahead and command T and we'll push it up into the very top corner of our canvas and hit enter after we've done the transformation. Visible 2 will transform the same way, Command T, and we'll just smush it nice in and close with Fishbowl Group 1 and hit Enter. Repeat that process. We just want everything to be a little more close together. Last but not least, all right, select the group, Command T. And line her up, hit enter. All right, now we have some extra canvas that isn't being used. That's what all that, all that transparent checkerboard is. So let's go to the tool called the crop tool and let's actually just crop that out of our image. Um, earlier we added canvas using our image size, and, or excuse me, we used our canvas size um, drop down menu. This time we're gonna do it from the crop tool. All right, once you have the crop tool loaded, you've got this fun little box that you can click and drag and release. When you're done, all you have to do is just change tools and it will apply it. All right, now let's go ahead and save this file. You can hit Command S. And if you have a PC, you'll hit Control S. Now you're going to save it to your desktop, your computer, and then submit it for the class. Um, you're going to have to submit it as a Photoshop document, a PSD. All right. 
So it will automatically offer that option. Um, from here, you can also save things like PDFs. Um, so let's save it as a Photoshop document. And I know I did this already, so we'll replace that first one and then hit OK. All right, you're all done. You did it. Um, I'll see you in Photoshop Lab 2.